<laughs> this is Atco and the little girl. I've done a couple videos about uh, media uh, history and uh, music, and uh, one with the first one was the original one with uh, cylinders and Victrolas type. And then in the second video, I talked about the 45s and the 33 and a third, and the uh, the vinyl. So what I want to do on this one was uh, have a little history of of the tape uh, media that came out from uh, 1950s to 1980s. Um, the technology of the tape was quite different uh, than what we had had before. You know, we had a, a record. Uh, we just had a, a groove that was uh, etched into a record and, uh, and it was permanent uh, recording. Back in the uh, uh, 1930s, uh, before the war, uh, a company in uh, Germany had come out with a tape uh, uh, system that uh, that they record and uh, be able to edit and use it for uh, uh, broadcasting. After World War II, um, we had companies uh, that were uh, interested in the technology and uh, a company called Ampex in the U.S. Um, came out their uh, tape uh, recording system and, uh, and that was sold uh, in the end of the 40s uh, for broadcasting. So, uh, Ampex thought that, well, you know, there, there could be a, uh, a market for consumers, so they came out with their first unit in um, about uh, around 1952, 53. Came out, what we call, like this one here, uh, a reel-to-reel -reel tape. Now, what we have with tape, you know, the fact is, all tape is, is, is just a piece of plastic and used some with some different types of uh, plastic. Uh, mylar was very, very popular. And it had a coating on it of uh, 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 some oxide that would allow it to uh, have uh, magnetic uh, 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 properties on it uh, so you could magnetic the uh, uh, recording. And the way it would do that was as you would run your tape around the head of the of the uh, recorder and the head would create a, a magnetic field and then that would be recorded onto the, the tape. And as the tape moves around it of course you would you would pick up all your, your sound. You play it back the head would work the same way. It would pick up the, the field of magnetic field and the head would pick it up and then the electronics then would amplify it and would go to your speakers. So they came out with their original tape like this, and uh, it was what they uh, it initially was called a, a two-track, because it would play just your track as as a mono, because most of the everything was mono at that time, and you'd play it off the the forward recording, and then you reverse it, you could have a second track that would come through. In 1954. Uh, the first tape came out with stereo and they called that a four track because each track you still had to just go forward once and you go uh, reverse once but each track would also have a track to the left and the right so you'd have two tracks going forward and then two tracks going back and then that would give you a four track plate so that's what came out and uh, uh, the uh, audio enthusiasts uh, really enjoyed it. They loved it. You could, it sounded great. Uh, you could get um, uh, up to two hours or so out of a one uh, uh, tape based on how much uh, speed or, or the length of the, of the tape. And uh, it sounded great. But all you could really hear at that time uh, they were only sold at um, uh, hi-fi uh, shops or, uh, or electronic places and uh, they didn't play uh, rock and roll. The, uh, 
the 50s uh, was sold, and even by the 60s, you could get rock and roll. But most uh, consumers didn't really care that much for it because even though it sounded great, it was very expensive. And a lot of people just want to have to deal with threading tape and all that stuff. So it really, even though the technology was great, it basically uh, was just a, a nick market. Now also in the 50s, uh, for broadcasting, they wanted to find a way to use this a little easier than with the, uh, with the tape, uh, reel to reel. And uh, some engineering was done to uh, make a, a one spool of, of uh, a tape into kind of a cartridge so you didn't have to thread this all the time. And they came out with this and um, uh, it was a what we call a uh, endless loop so there was no two spools it was just just the one and it was sold for um, for uh, broadcasting and it was actually very popular in the 50s for like uh, uh, radio stations and that that could uh, uh, play their uh, 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 commercials or anything like that, pop that in, pop it out real quick and not have to thread anything. But there was no real use, uh, nobody was looking into this as a, uh, uh, a consumer uh, prop, prop, a product. But then in the, in the 60s there was a, a uh, a large uh, used car dealer called uh, Ernie uh, Madman uh, Mutz. Uh, this was in California and uh, he knew about these cartridges and he thought, uh, hey, you know what, there is, uh, there's something in that. Uh, if you could have a cartridge like that and you have it in your car and you could play your music you wanted to hear at any time on your car, there might be something there. So he, uh, he licensed the, the cartridge, the four track cartridge, and, um, and he licensed some music, uh, and he designed, since, since uh, Mutz was an engineer, he designed a player for it, for his car, and he modified the cartridge that people were using for uh, broadcasting, and uh, started making cartridges and his players with his uh, his cars and was selling them like crazy. So he was out there taking a drive with one of his engineer friends named uh, uh, Bill Lear and if you know Bill Lear he designed the Lear jet and he drove with them and he thought this was pretty cool this uh, four track player. But he saw there were some bad sides of it thought he could make the technology a little more reliable and he thought that there wasn't enough time on the, the, the tape. Well he thought about it, you can't really make more tape in there because it would uh, make the, the cartridge any more bigger than it was and he didn't want to make it any bigger. So he thought, you know, maybe we could put in more tracks than there's already on there with the four track. And that's what he did. He uh, he decided to make instead of four tracks, eight tracks on that tape, and uh, double the the length of, of playing the songs. So uh, that's where the eight track came from. What he did, he got together with Ford. He got together with Ampex, and I think RCA was involved, and they perfected a uh, a player for eight tracks and a uh, cartridge that could be sold to the uh, auto industry. Now both of those, you can't tell much difference between the two. That is a 4-track and that's an 8-track. They, uh, they are a little different. The, the uh, mechanics are a little different. But they're the same size and if you didn't know too close to it, you'd think they were the same. But a 4-track and 8-track is not compatible with with each other's players. So uh, Ford uh, designed this A-Track and put their first uh, 
uh, model out in 1966. I think it, the first model they came out was with the uh, Mustang. And it was very, very uh, uh, successful. So um, everybody wanted to have one. And then uh, GM and uh, Chrysler came out the next year with, with selling them as well. If you didn't have a brand new car, you could go buy a player, hang that under the, the dash, and you could play one, buy one from an electronic company and uh, uh, put one in your car by yourself. Along with that, cassettes were coming out. Uh, cassettes actually were nothing but a a reel-to-reel -reel, kind of miniaturized of a reel-to-reel -reel tape but they put it in a plastic case so that you didn't have to thread anything with it. Phillips brought that out in 1963 and, and their thought was to have it for dictation. Towards the end of the 60s though uh, some companies thought maybe we can sell this for uh, uh, uses, music. So they came out with the uh, uh, the cassette recorders for, for cars. The audio uh, critics hated it. They said that it was, uh, you know, the quality was was poor, uh, uh, worse than 8-tracks. Uh, nothing, uh, the best quality was the, the uh, real to real. But uh, consumers loved it. Uh, it was small. Uh, it was uh, uh, more reliable than eight tracks. If you ever had an eight track, um, you could have. Uh, when you get to the end of the track, you might be in the middle of a, of a song, so it would have to uh, uh, sign down uh, of the song and then uh, come back again on the next track. Which, <laughs> even when I was there, I hated that stuff with a. a, a uh, cassette, uh, you'd have every on one side or the other side, and you wouldn't have to listen to going between uh, the the tracks. So um, they had a lot of pluses to it. Uh, so then they started making the electronics a lot better, and by the 70s, uh, quality was pretty good, and uh, the eight tracks started to uh, lose the the sales of the uh, of the eight tracks. And then by uh, the beginning of the, the 80s, uh, they actually ceased uh, making uh, manufacturers of uh, 8-tracks. So the cassettes were very, very popular in the 70s and very, very popular in the 80s. Uh, with some good equipment, you could sound as, as good as you could get with uh, cassettes as you probably did with the old uh, wheel wheels. But then, of course, uh, the CDs came out about the middle of the 80s and, and that that kind of killed the uh, the vinyl, at least for mass production. And uh, but the cassettes really hung around through almost all of the 90s. Um, so uh, it was a good good uh, time at there uh, from the 50s to the 80s. They had uh, you know the beginning of 78s, then the 45s, then the 33 and a thirds, and the four tracks, and the eight tracks, and the reel to reels, and the cassettes. It's amazing uh, during those three decades of uh, so much happened to, to music and, and the media of recording. So that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it. Just a quick little history of, of uh, tape. And uh, if you, I hope you enjoyed that. And, and uh, if you uh, would ever like to to watch any of my other videos. Please just go to my channel and just uh, uh, find me on, on ATCO21117. That's my channel. Or uh, just get on uh, YouTube and search and just search on uh, ATCO's Collections. And uh, when you search on that, you'll get a list of my, my videos. And uh, I'd be very happy to have you uh, uh, watch any of my videos. So, uh, well, that's it for now, and uh, uh, this is Atco uh, signing off.